Now we will move on to the second round, Virginia Tueno and Mateo Padola. In Virginia, you will go first. The question is, the LGBTQ resource groups in the Central Valley receive far less funding than coastal communities. What types of LGBTQ issues do you believe should be addressed by Congress, and specifically, how would you address these issues? First and foremost, I, I believe the LGBTQ community needs to be recognized as a community. I believe in equality, and I believe that there is and has been systemic, historic discrimination. I truly believe everybody, everybody matters. And so why aren't we putting in provisions to protect all people regardless of their color, their creed, their beliefs, and sexual orientation? I believe in equality. Thank you. Mateo? So I, I fully support, um, and this goes for LGBT, women, race, any protected status, a uh, platform of non-discrimination. And that's in housing, in employment, in family matters, in adoption, even where it's possible to help um, religious leaders, uh, what's called, basically, basically uh, make a, a wedding official, solemnize a wedding. Um, we have to support a platform of non-discrimination. Um, what that means is, that, I'm sorry, there's still many individuals in that community that are not being recognized by what's called their true gender ID. And that's something that needs to be put in law because maybe we don't all understand the decisions that some people make, but we know that we're all human and we all deserve to live a life with respect and dignity. And, you know, get it from religion, get it from wherever you get from, the golden rule is something that it makes life a lot easier. <laughs> Thank you. A follow-up question for Virginia. Specifically, how would you in Congress address these issues with legislation? Well, let's just take for example the legislation that was introduced to ban transgender from serving in our military. How is that equality? How is that humane? How is that American? For me, it's about establishing a level playing field. We are all Americans, and at the end of the day, we expect equality for all. What type of legislation would you advance to bring additional funding to the Central Valley LGBTQ needed resources? One, what, I'll answer that question in a second, but one direct power as a congressman is signing off on applications for grants. So that's helping organizations, nonprofits usually, and sometimes public agencies obtain federal dollars to help specific communities. And a congressman has a lot of power in which grants he, he supports, which one he helps fight for. That's some, I would prioritize something that my constituents came to me any day, because that's what I did working for a congressman. Um, specifically, I guess one sp small specific example is for veterans, let's say, we need a, a network where all of their discharge paperwork and, and, sorry, where it's all streamlined and in one place. One specific example is where I helped a veteran who later had a, you know, made, made the transition and was not receiving their benefits because they were not being recognized as the gender by the defensive department. It's the defense uh, enrollment edu eligibility service. But basically, because that one paperwork error, that, that was holding up their, their benefits. So it's really proactive legislation is what we need to pursue. Thank you. Thank you. Dottie Nygaard and Josh Harder. Dottie, you'll go first. Question being, the LGBTQ equality is a core tenet of the democratic platform. What can you do if elected to ensure equality for all LGBTQ individuals, and what issues do you believe are at the top of the list for these individuals? So as a Democrat and we stand for people, it is wrong to discriminate against anyone based on their race, their gender, their religion, and we have no right to tell someone who they want to love. So as 
a congressperson, I would actually inf um, bring the LGBT community under the protection of Title VII. That we shouldn't ha they shouldn't have to be worried about getting married on Saturday and then fired on Monday. I want to stand strong with the LGBT community. They deserve fair and equal access to employment, housing, and public services. We need to make sure that we prohibit employment discrimination. And this is where Title VII would be able to strengthen that under the Civil Rights Civil right Act. It is time that we move together as a nation united. We cannot divide us up. And that is where I will strongly advocate that we continue to fight for all communities in our nation, and especially with our LGBTQ. Thank you. Thank you. Josh, two minutes. One of the core reasons I'm a Democrat, one of my values as a human being, is that every life deserves dignity and, and respect. There's a couple things that I would do concretely uh, to help advance LGBTQ rights. First, as has already been said, uh, transgendered folks serving in the military absolutely needs to be allowed. I agree with our generals that that needs to be promoted um, and, 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 and accepted. Second, Betsy DeVos has removed a lot of protections. Uh, I see a lot of people uh, not, not big fans here, not surprised. Uh, have removed a lot of the protections for transgendered kids in our K-12 schools. I don't think our biggest priority for education in this country should be singling out transgendered kids just because of who they are. That's something that Congress can reverse. And third, there's still a lot of employment discrimination that happens all across this country. Did you know in 28 states you could be fired today for being gay? In 30 states, you can be fired for being trans. Can you imagine going to work every day fearing that you could be fired just because of who you are or who you love? That's wrong. We can reverse that if we have a federal anti-discrimination law that actually promotes uh, anti-discrimination for housing and for employment, and that's what I'd support. Thank you. Dottie, a one-minute rebuttal. You know, it, it, it is sad that we are in this time and frame of discriminating against people for choice on who they love. I would, one, one other really important issue that we have to look at is that we need to make sure that we appoint qualified justices who can rule fairly, balancing religious liberty, and LGBTQ protections. So, you know, we're under attack right now in Washington from everything imaginable. And we have a representative in this district right now that is voting right in line with him. We need to make sure we stand strong and together on issues that will not divide up our communities and keep us together as a, as a nation. Thank you. Josh, one minute. One of the other things that's happening all across the country is a handful of states like Indiana, under Mike Pence, and North Carolina <laughs> are using religious liberty as an excuse uh, to promote more anti-gay discrimination. That's not right. We can't let states erode these protections. So we have some states that have fantastic uh, LGBTQ rights and other states where that's unbelievably undermined. We need to make sure that it's a clear, uh, systematic standard all across the country. We can only do that if Congress does its job uh, and actually pushes for the rights that are necessary. Thank you. Thank you. Sue Zwallen and TJ Cox. Sue, you will go first. Beyond the legalization of gay marriage, what does LGBTQ equality mean to you, and what role do you believe Congress can play in working towards equality on this issue? I oppose discrimination of all kinds, strongly. And I can speak to this locally in our congressional district 
when there was issues regarding this situation in our area, I was the one that stepped up and attended PFLAG meetings, which is parents and friends and family of lesbians and gays. I made friends there. These uh, members of this group have become my very dearest friends and are some of my greatest supporters. I love them. I would fight for them and for their rights. This is what I've spent my life doing. On the school board, we uh, made policy, again, that protected all of our students from any sort of discrimination or harassment. I believe that my record stands for itself, and this is what I would take to Washington, D.C., this passion and this concern that I have for all of our citizens. Thank you. TJ? LGBTQ rights are our rights. These are our sons and daughters, our brothers and sisters, and in America should be a place where everyone feels safe and secure, particularly from their government. But this is an administration that is attacking our, this community through their ban on transgenders serving in the military. And thank God that was recently overturned. But recently, what did President Trump do? On New Year's Eve, he disbanded the President's Advisory Council for HIV AIDS, gave them their walking papers on New Year's Eve. Why? Did he replace it with anybody? He did not. You know, what we can do as a congressman, and what Jeff Denham just ha absolutely hasn't done, is be an advocate for this group. You know, I would suggest that he goes to a Trans Remembrance Day to see the brothers and sisters and sons and daughters have been killed just because of who they are. I mean, you can't go to one of those days and come back and not be moved for this, for, for this population. And you can't be moved not to, in order to stand up and do something about it. And there are lots of things that we can do about it. As a congressman, you've got the podium. You've got the place where you can, you can advocate and you can bring dollars for pride centers. You know, we were working with a pride center up in San Joaquin and here and down in Fresno. And the other thing that's particularly important to the LGBT community is healthcare. And they get most of that from Medicaid. And Jeff Denham, what do you do? Votes to cut Medicaid. And what he particularly voted to cut was Title 10 of Medicaid, which provides specific grants to treat the LGBT com community. In Congress, I can tell you what I'll do is I'll set up community health clinic to serve that special needs community because they do have distinct health care needs. Thank you. Sue, a follow-up. What specific role do you believe you could undertake as a congressional leader in order to advocate for your position? As I'm in the community speaking with uh, people, you know, we all hear comments that are derogatory that I believe would make any of us feel unsafe or insecure or possibly not be able to feel safe going to school or getting the education that, we, that maybe a student deserves. My record speaks for itself. I've advocated for the LGBTQ com community. I've supported, I've attended meetings with them. As I've said, they are my friends. And I would take all of that energy and uh, passionate, all the passionate feelings that I have about this topic and, and go to Washington, D.C. to advocate for them and make law and legislation that would provide for these protections that they so deserve. Time. Thank you very much. We didn't get a spell again. We didn't forget about you, I oh. promise. And TJ, specifically, what roles can you play as a congressional leader to advocate for these positions you outlined? Specifically, is that exactly what I could say? You could be their advocate. They need an advocate, especially in these times with this president. And you would stand up for them, you would protect them, and you would advance and promote what they need. Things, as I was talking about, like community health clinics right here in the district. And, you know, the number one thing that you could do as a congressman is join the LGBTQ uh, uh, caucus and you could form your own advisory committee. That's what we've done with this cam campaign. We have got our own advisory committee to inform me on the issues that are particular to them, because I don't know them all, 
And the input we get from them is eye-opening about what needs to be done and what hasn't been done. Thank you. Thank you. We're now moving, we're now moving on to the third round.